Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. John Allen of Lebanon, Indiana is a third generation agricultural photographer. The son of Chester Allen and grandson of J.C. Allen, John grew up in Lafayette, Indiana, watching his grandfather and father take photographs of men and women on their farms, working in the fields, tending livestock in their barns, and operating horse-drawn and belt-driven machinery in their barnyards. I spent an afternoon with John at his home where he keeps a large collection of glass plates, negatives, and prints of the photos he, his father and grandfather, have taken. John talked about how J.C. Allen got started with agricultural photography in the early years of the 20th century. He went to Purdue with my grandmother in 1909. They sold the, the big farm down near Clay City and moved to West Lafayette in the animal science department he took pictures of livestock to show both good and bad animal conformation. Some of the pictures were used by magazines like Grover's Journal. They attracted a lot of attention, and Purdue, being a very young university, needed publicity. The university commissioned him to become their photographer instead of working with animal science with the agreement that he could make as many pictures on his own as he wanted to. The, the university needed publicity and that's what he did then until he left the university retirement in 1951 at which time we moved the business from the what was originally the ag experiment station on Purdue University up to his address on 1341 Northwestern Avenue in West Lafayette which is now Purdue's Center for Regional uh, Development. My dad joined the business after he graduated from Purdue in 1929. Actually, he joined the business a little before he graduated because he was helping grandfather make pictures. He was also working for the Purdue DeVries and the Purdue Exponent. So he became a photographer as he was graduating from Purdue in 1929. And continued his entire life with the business. When I graduated from high school in the 50s, there was a thing called the draft. So you either were drafted or you joined. I just went ahead and joined up. So I was in the military for four years. When I came back from the military, I had VA and they sent me to Purdue. I got my bachelor's degree from Purdue School of Business Management and joined the business. And for many years, the three of us worked together until I lo we lost grandfather in 1976 at the age of 95, and then I lost dad at the age of 89 in 1996. We continued with the business at a location in West Lafayette until about 10 years ago when I moved the business here into my home because we don't really do any retail business. I was able to operate from my home. And that's where we are right now as we film this. There were a lot of markets, and one, one of them also uh, was school books. And so a lot of things didn't have to do with advertising. They had illustrating, illustrating uh, even for, for school books and children's books. Um, so there was almost nothing excluded. Uh, any family activities, any farming activities, uh, it was all included. And uh, the transition from working with the animal science 
into doing basically all the all the Purdue pictures, it took a, that transition took from 1912 to 1916, as I understand, for them to have a fully established Purdue photography. By 1916, that was accomplished. So he would be taking pictures of extension agents working with farmers. And 4-H, and farming, and domestic, and children, and all activities, uh, any sports, it was all included. Uh, they did, they did for many years, they did all of Purdue sports as well as as educational things. Um, it, it, th there was just nothing excluded at all. And one of the interesting things about being a photographer, you get to see some of the most interesting things that take place. Grandfather took pictures close up and personal of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Amelia Earhart. In my time, I on more than one occasion uh, got to see the first man that walked on the moon. So we, we've gotten to meet some very interesting individuals in, in doing, this, uh, doing this picture work. Before he, he died, he donated a, a, a truckload of pictures that had related to Purdue and so forth. And uh, I have a picture of him helping load the truck with, with photographs that he donated to the Purdue archives. And of course, this was, this was in the early 1970s that that took place. One of the things in my background that I consider valuable, my mother's parents, had a well just outside the kitchen door. They cooked on a coal stove that would stay lit overnight with, with coal embers. And uh, yes, they had a privy uh, out beyond the cherry trees and, and the orchard. And uh, it was a wonderful way of life. They had chickens running loose in the orchard and uh, the well water was wonderful. And I, I remember those days, this is during my lifetime, that I remember them, and they were happy people. And, 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 and uh, it met all their needs. And this is one of the things that the, the, uh, the photos can show, how, how easy life can be. When grandfather started making pictures, there weren't tractors except for a few steam tractors. They weren't used like tractors today. They were used basically for stationary power. They would uh, sometimes hook them up to a, a separator to thresh grain and so on. But they were basically, the old steam tractors were basically used for stationary power. Um, the first ones that tractors that came along used in the field were kerosene tractors. And there were stories that people that used them would tell. They would build, to get them started, they would build a fire underneath the tractor. Now you can't imagine doing that today, a tractor would catch fire. But they would actually build a fire under it to get the thing started. And they would keep it running then until they were done, done with it. They had iron wheels. There was, when they started making more modern tractors, there were very few photographers, so we wound up making pictures for most of the tractor companies. We've taken some of the very best photos by J.C. Allen and Sons and put them in three volumes called America's Rural Yesterday. Volume 1 is Field Work, which features photos of farmers in the fields plowing, cultivating, planting, and harvesting the crops with draft horses, mules, and vintage tractors. Volume 2 is Barn and Farmyard, which shows farmers working with cattle, horses, poultry, and hogs, as well as putting up hay, silage, corn, and other crops grown for feed.
Volume 3 is at home and in town, where farmers and their families relax in the parlor, eat together in the dining room, and prepare meals in the kitchen. It also shows what it was like in small-town America in the 1930s and 40s. To order a copy of these books, just call toll-free 1-877-647-2452. One copy is $24.95, or order any two for $44.95 or all three for just fifty-four ninety-five. Shipping on the first book is seven dollars and three dollars for each additional book. Please call toll-free 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.mishka.com. He had made the entire round trip from the Midwest to the West Coast and back on what was listed as a highway, and it's nothing but a, a cow path. And uh, th those, and he, there were no motels. They had to carry gasoline with them on the car because there was no filling stations. But he traveled all over the United States like that, can uh, living in a tent pitched beside his car and having to carry extra tires and, and extra gasoline and oil. And uh, they had a good time doing it. We will set up the antique view camera that's about 100 years old to be able to take pictures of the horses. This is parts of the wooden tripod. Each of these goes clipped onto this wooden top. And we have a tripod. Now this camera has been reconditioned and a little bit against our will when they reconditioned it, they took and chrome plated the brass fixtures but we were trying for functionality. And the idea in chroming it was so that it wouldn't corrode. But this camera is as it would have been about 100 years ago. You would set it up and level it as though you were going to take a picture of those horses. This is a cable release which went on the shutter.
glass plates were originally in these holders. And these are slides. So inside each one of these holders was two glass plates, one for one side, one for the other. So you would put the, well, the first thing you would actually do would be to put a cloth over your head and open the shutter. And you would focus it by looking through the camera with your head underneath here. And so you would focus it this way. And when you got it to the right place, you would, you would tighten this to keep it in place. You would take this film holder, put it in the camera like that, tell the horses to smile, take your slide out. Now, when the film wasn't shot, it had the metal colored edge on it. You snap the picture, then you put the slide back in with the black color so you know which films had been shot. And you have a picture of your horse. My name is Fred Whitford. I am the director of Purdue Pesticide Programs and we're a function of the School of Ag here at Purdue and specifically I focus on extension. I go out in the state and I work with farmers and rural people uh, today uh, just like we did many, many years ago. I came here in 1991 and, and I was interested in, I asked a, just a simple question, who are we? So I went to the library to check out some books, assuming somebody would have written books on our history of extension um, and even research and found there was very little material on it. And that got me started interested in, as sort of a, a sideline to my work. I do have to do my other work, my extension work, but this allows me then to do almost like research. You know, we're going to look at our history and who the important players are. And we started with players here on campus, a person named Professor Latta, which um, I attribute to much of what we do today. The first woman of ag was Virginia Meredith, our first dean that built the campus, and then our latest venture has been a photographic history of what the county agents put in their annual reports to what they wanted us to see, USDA to see, their bosses to see, their counties to see. Just a fascinating collection of photographs with very detailed captions, which really helped make the book as part of our bicentennial. J.C. Allen would be, by any measure, would be the one that documented who we were in the early years. And early years mean at the turn, uh, past 1900 when he came here, um, uh, up until I think the 50s. And then he was, in fact, our photographer. Uh, we have photographers today uh, across the campus, but he was the one that would document almost any activity, all activities. And so from that are probably hundreds of thousands of photographs that he not only captured a moment in time, but he gave us just many times captions, names, what he was doing, what he was seeing. And that is really the remarkable part. It's the documentation. I mean, pictures are really wonderful, but if you don't have the, the, the who, what, and where, and when, it, they, they have less value. Probably the, the people that's listening to this program today, if any of them do antiques, antique stores or flea markets, and you walk through, and there are these pictures, a dollar a piece, and you look at them, and you're saying, well, this is somebody's family. This is somebody's kids. So if you're into antiques, and those old pictures make you sad, because you know those pictures ought to be with somebody. Families don't die out. And it's, it's the same thing here, myself. I love being able to handle the photographs. And if you look at them, along with the words, it really puts you in that 1924, out in that pasture, out with that cow, looking at, you could almost feel the breeze, I always tell people. Some of these photographs, you can almost feel the heat, the, the, the wind. Now, people say, well, that's sort of silly, and I'm thinking, no, it's just, that's what photographs do um, provide us. It's a, a moment in time that will never be duplicated by anybody else. Every photograph is special 
to that one moment in time. Because as soon as Mr. Allen snapped that shot, that time's gone. Here are some J.C. Allen prints. And you might say, okay, well, it's just corn hanging. But just the other day, I went to a, a, a museum, an outdoor museum. We took a, a many Chinese historians, ag historians out, and we saw some of these. And the pictures allow us to see how it was. Um, and so there's a story behind how we let the corn dry. And so what we did here in Extension, the photographs helped to document when, how to do things, when to do it, and then the, the, and then the, uh, uh, the results. And so again, if you're tiling, uh, if you're tiling and you're placing tiles, these pictures in the, in, like say, Extension Agent reports um, documented what they were doing and how they were doing. As importantly, as the, as the Extension edu Agents at that time as they were known, then a lot of these were put on uh, Mr. Allen's slides and theirs were put on glass slides. And so the photographs then became almost what would become in my day the standard slide that you put in a projector which is now PowerPoint and this is the machine that we actually use to shine, uh, to, sh to put those slides on, you would put it in here, um, turn on the light and you could actually shine that up on the wall so it became a teaching tool. Lastly, for historians, um, I didn't live in the 1920s so all I have is what did people say and what photographs did we have and so when I look at when I look at photographs and we are talking about we're talking something like this it's just it's just a photograph but with the words you can actually see because this is the radio and how important the radio was in extension to be able to, or actually for anybody, but it, we used the radio to get out to rural people who couldn't travel. They were basically landlocked around their farms, no roads, no access. And so these kind of pictures then show you from a historical perspective what the radios look like. And I didn't know this until a couple weeks ago. And you can now you can see that the families, you've got a set of headphones, they can dial in, they have an amplifier, and that the whole family set around the radio. And you and I have heard that, Joe. Everybody sat around and watched the game. Well, this was how we connected. So I guess from a, from a historical perspective, somebody who writes on history, these photographs allow me to see what people are saying in words. And, and, and it helps me to do a better job sort of writing the history. Hi, I'm John Allen, J.C. Allen's grandson. This is John Allen Benham. J.C. Allen's grandson, youngest grandson. I'm the baby of the family. <laughs> this, this was the home built in 1927 by our grandparents. And we celebrated Christmas here together. And we would sometimes in the summertime play croquet in this yard with the family. This is the uh, breakfast room on the back side of the house and these windows would swing right open. You didn't have to crank them or anything. And Granddad would eat his breakfast at the table and have his loaded shotgun right there. And he'd swing that window open. This is Grandmother's flower beds out here. And he'd swing that window wide open and start blasting at the rabbits. And I think he must have done it quite a bit because I never saw Grandmother flinch. <laughs> this program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.